Oh, would you look at that? Someone's complaining. Someone is complaining that they got cancelled because of something they might have not done. But it's not like, you know, they got cancelled for saying something stupid on Twitter. They got cancelled for maybe, I don't know, pushing back too hard on a particular guest on the podcast show. No, they were accused by four separate women spanning two decades of some sort of sexual assault. And they're complaining right that they're not able to live inside of their cushy mansion and take their kids to private school in a chauffeur driven car imagine imagine the hypocrisy imagine it imagine living in a world where people hold you up to some sort of standard when you get involved in such allegations imagine just imagine we lived in a world where people found it a little bit bizarre that the stories that you're being alleged of had some sort of relevancy or some sort of connection to the things that you've maybe spoken about on podcasts prior. And again, I say that as a fan of Brian Cannon. I like the guy. He seems like a cool dude. He's really funny. t K during the early days on Fox was probably one of my go-to podcasts for me to listen to. But come on, these allegations aren't anything. They're not some nonsense fly-by-night allegations. They're pretty serious. One of the women that's known Cannon for, what, the best part of two decades is, is alleging that he might have taken advantage of her in the most egregious way possible. It starts with R and ends with E. That's what she's accusing him for. Another lady who's probably, you know, maybe the most believable story out of all of them, if you really want to be a staunch Brian Callum supporter, one of the most believable stories and something that you can definitely picture him doing is a story of him getting in his undies at the Urban Outfit somewhere in California and deciding that he should take the opportunity to pin the cell assistant up against the changing room door, allegedly. That sounds a bit sketchy, but that also sounds very similar to what our friend Brian Callen sometimes ends up doing. But hey, he's complaining now. He's now blaming cancel culture for the fact that he's now been iced out of the industry. His opportunities have completely dried up like a raisin. And whatever career momentum he had built up in the last few years has evaporated into thin air as per normal. Now, for me personally, like I've pointed out on this podcast or on my channel i'm not really a fan of cancel culture i much prefer the fans deciding when or how you're able to earn a living if the fans have had enough of you and they think you're talking out of your asshole and they're not really fans of what you do or what you stand for then they can decide whether or not you have a career or not i'm not really a fan of these gated institutions coming in and deciding you get a career you don't i just don't think it's fair but if we play by today's rules and i'm a big believer in dealing with realism and operating in a world as is not as you you hope it to be then it is with the law of the land what do you expect you can't have four women coming out back to back giving stories to the los angeles times pinning you out to be some sort of monster and you think you can go back on your podcast everything is fine you gotta address the issues came out and just said hey here's my side of the story here's what i have to say regarding here here's my rebuttal he just hid behind his lawyers which probably makes more sense than listen to some dusty looking guy like myself but still if you went to defend yourself and actually make it believable that maybe these stories are not the truth you should have come out and defended yourself but again here's a little clip here from the conspiracy social club of brian callen basically blaming cancel culture for the fact that his career has gone completely kaput big up to the um, homeless cats for clipping this up as well in a position where they can't feed their children and their children have to move out of the house that you worked 30 years to to fucking afford etc don't get it wrong cancel culture is murder they, what they're trying to do is if they could murder you if they could actually put you on the street where you were starving they would they would starve you in a fucking cell so don't tell me that this is that that this mob mentality mob accusation mob rule dogpiling shit is good for our democracy or for our humanity it's I fucking agree, not they're, they're, it's why we wet. have due process and but i'm let's telling go you something yeah. i want all women to hear this American with chicks, you are making chicks. it so nobody wants to date you. I think You're a lot of women agree with this. What? I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of women agree with this shit. I think a lot of women. Well, I know a lot of women. It's the only way it's going it. to stop unless they start pushing back, yeah, and they, women, they have, women to have to do, do it. it. This is out of control, man. Yes, women. Women have to lead the charge. You and I are are, are we're talking into the wind right now. Wait, talk to me about Meghan Markle. Let's let's. Talk about talking into the wind. My word, my word. To be completely fair, though, 
that vitamin sniffing conspiracy theorist in terms of Sam Tripoli is probably Brian Callan's best friend mm. in this, you know, entire ordeal. Who's probably been Brian Callan's, you know, staunchest supporter, somebody who came out firing from the gates when these mm. allegations first came about and stood by the guy, even when, you know, it seemed as if all bets were off and he was never going to get his career again. But he definitely put his career on the line in order to give Brian Callan a platform. So you have to give Sam Tripoli props. So put him to one side. But come on cancel culture i thought cancel culture was these you know these um college professors getting in trouble for you know using the n-word in context when they're giving a lecture in a you know at a university somewhere i thought maybe cancel culture was somebody at a workplace um referring to their female colleague as a bitch and then the female colleague writing them up and them losing their entire job and their 401k and having to be you know uh, panhandling on gofundme or something i thought cancel culture was um you know maybe you deciding that you thought you read some different signals from a female colleague again uh reading too much into it deciding to make a move and then that female colleague being very un you know feeling a little bit untoward about it reporting in the paper not as a crime just reporting a story and then you getting cancelled for that i thought that was cancel culture i didn't think cancel culture was being accused of rape i didn't think that was a thing i didn't think that was cancel culture i would assume if you anyone was accused of rape you or i you'd probably go out on a defensive and be like hey i didn't do that thing I didn't do that. That's not true. Here's what happened. X, Y, Z. One, two, three. A, B, C. You'd lay out the entire, you know, um, um, events from how you can remember it, how you can piece it together in your mind and basically put your case forward. If the court of public opinion deems you to still be guilty, at least you've got your story out there. At least you have your story out there. Now, again, maybe it's not sound to do that considering these dudes and these people in Hollywood are less, uh, they're less so individuals and more so brands, right? They have a lot of people that are basically earning a living and supporting their family based on what they do. They have a lot of sponsorships attached to them, bloody blah, blah, blah. You can't just make a move off your own back of like that. But then again, you have to say he got himself in that position too, right? He went to dance with the Hollywood devil. He went to get inside the industry, you know, rub shoulders with everybody up there. And eventually what ends up happening, if you're not careful, they end up eating you. They end up biting you in the bum. They end up kicking you in the bum, actually. They end up pushing you off the side of the cliff through your bum. That's what they end up doing. And that's exactly what happened to Brian Callan. So is it cancer culture? Of course it's not. Of course it's not. We know it's not cancer culture. We know it's more so a case of Brian being reckless, probably being a little bit clumsy. Maybe these events did happen. Maybe it didn't happen. But the way he dealt with it, going out on the attack the way he did, um, immediately uh, painting it as a cancer culture deal when it was an opportunity, when he had the opportunity to be a little bit more, how do you say, understanding of the feelings and experiences that these women were going through or how they remembered their interactions, maybe coming to their, maybe meeting them where they're at, maybe having an occasion where he can maybe reach out to them publicly so they can mediate and have some sort of conversation, whatever he just dealt with it completely shockingly bad and that's why now he's been banished to vimeo doing a conspiracy social club podcast with somebody he probably wouldn't have spoken to a couple of years ago it does really end that way doesn't it it does really end that way <laughs>